The fingers under the door. Okay, so around 9 or 10 years ago, I was living with my mom, dad and older sister in an oldish house in a very small village. Like when I say small, I mean its only main feature was a small church and a few scattered houses occupied mostly by very old people. At the time it was the summer so I wasn't at school or anything and since we were so far in the middle of nowhere, I spent most of that time at home glued to one screen or another. The usual routine was I wake up around 10 or 11. By this point, mom, dad and sister had all left for work so I had the house to myself. I would go downstairs, make some toast, watch some random stuff on TV for an hour before heading back to my room to continue with whatever game I was grinding through that particular day. The usual habit of a 17 year old guy cut off from the world by many, many fields. I should give a quick rundown of our house. It was an older cottage with two rooms upstairs, mine and my sister's, and everything else downstairs. As you walk up the stairs, you got to a very small landing and could go either left to my room or immediate right to my sister's room. Basically, the way this was laid out was I could sit in my room with the door open and my sister's room is directly opposite. I should also mention that the ceilings in both our bedroom were slanted. We were basically in a large attic where the roof slanted down, because of where the slant met the wall, we had a crawl space that ran the length of the house on either side of the rooms, both with a small door to access them. These were mostly used for storing normal attic stuff, like Christmas decorations and old forgotten toys. The doors to these were thin little things, about 4 feet tall with a small handle on the outside. This is important because turning these tiny doorknobs opened them but only from the outside. If the door was pushed shut with you inside, there was no way back out. I discovered this myself on more than one occasion. The door on my side ran along my room and along one wall in my sister's room and her ran along the other side along my room. This space was not very big, you had to crouch to stand in it and most of the time you were in there, you were crawling on hands and knees. This is all important, I promise. Anyway, this one morning I'm awoken to a familiar noise. Some sort of a small creature rustling around in the crawl space on my sister's side. I could hear this because my bed was against the wall that ran along it. Not an unusual noise. Living in the countryside, we had mice almost constantly and pretty much had the run of the storage spaces. No matter how many traps were put down. I thought nothing of it and got up and went off to begin my morning ritual of toast and television. The first odd thing I noticed was while watching TV, I could hear movements upstairs. My sister's room was directly above the living room, so I assumed she'd just not gone to work that day for whatever reason and continued munching. Around an hour or two later, I went back upstairs and booted my PC. As I was waiting, I turned around to my open door and faced my sister's closed one and I realized it was late in the day and she had yet to leave her room. An odd thing since she normally parked up on sofa in the living room on her days off and didn't move until our parents returned. We are not the most active family. I started to think that maybe she was at work and I imagined the noise from upstairs but as I mused this I noticed a crack of light at the bottom of her door as a shadow passed by it. Okay so there's definitely someone in there so it must be her right? I once again pushed it from my mind and went back to my PC. More time passed and the thought came back to me. Why would she be at home but not leave? She has only a small TV in her room and no book, so what had she been doing in there all day? I glanced back around and again saw a shadow under the door. She was still moving around in there, so what's up? I finally decided to knock on her door. I knocked a few times and said her name. No answer. Weird. But maybe she had headphones or something on. I knocked a bit harder again and said her name again, but louder. No answer. Alright, I thought, fuck this. I'm just going to go in, so I cracked the door open and peered around. I found an empty room. No one inside at all. Feeling slightly confused but better that it was just my imagination, I stepped in properly and looked around and saw something that made me full on panic. Near the bottom of her little door leading to the crawl space, there was a small hole that the mice had made to get in and out at the bottom. Really small but just big enough to fit half of your hand through. 
They're coming through that hole with four fingers, holding the door shut from the inside. At first I thought, no, it can't be fingers. Don't be stupid. Until I watched them slowly creep back through the hole into the crawl space. I lost my shit. Very quietly though, I might add. I backed out of the room, shutting the door behind me and ran to my room. Being the stupid teenager I was, I grabbed what might be the most imposing weapon I could find. The fake Winchester rifle cap gun I got from Disneyland a few years previous. I figured that if whoever was hiding in that bedroom didn't believe it was a real firearm, I could at least hit him with it. I ran off downstairs to where my dogs were on the far side of the house and called my mom, who worked about a 5 minute drive from our house. She told me to stay put and that her and her manager were on their way. In this time I made a small upgrade from fake plastic rifle to one of my dad's golf clubs. I felt much better with that. Finally, my mom and her boss John turn up and I tell them everything leading up to this point. They say okay and we all set off upstairs to investigate. Me rather unheroically bringing up the rear with my golf club. Get into my sister's room and I point to the door. I will never know if my mom is just hard as nails or massively stupid but while John and I watch, she marches over to the door, yanks it open and sticks her head in. A moment passes while she looks left and right and John and I are preparing to yank her back from the clutches of the psycho hobo murderer hiding in there before she shouts, Chris, what the fuck are you doing in there? Get out! Small amount of backstory. Chris was my sister's boyfriend. Unbeknownst to me, the night before my dad had asked Chris to leave as he had stayed with us for around five days at this point. He said, yep, that's cool. And as far as my mom and dad knew, he'd had it home. What really happened was instead of leaving, him and my sister had planned to make it seem like he'd left, then he could stay another night. He would then wake up before my mom shouted my sisters up for work like she did every morning and would hide in the crawl space and sleep there until everyone had left for the day. The one small hitch in the plan that they did not think of was, you guessed it, me. They forgotten I was home and conveniently sat directly opposite the only exit for most of the day, so he was trapped. When I knocked, he hid himself behind the door and held it shut to prevent being locked in. Anyway, my mom swiftly told him to get the fuck out and not to come back. Sadly, this was not the last time we set the guy as it turned out he would have stolen quite a bit of money from my sister's room while he had been hiding out and then because my sister makes terrible decisions, got her pregnant and proceeded to smash windows trying to get at her and the baby around a year later. Full well we lived in the same city when I went to uni and he was spending time at the prison there for stabbing someone in a completely different town. Super guy. Oh, and a small topper to all of this, as I mentioned earlier, the only rooms upstairs are mine and my sister's bedroom. He'd been in there for close to 14 hours with no access to a toilet. But no worry for this guy because he had lots of empty bottles to piss in, which he kindly left behind for us to clean up. And finally, around a year later, as mom was getting the Christmas decoration out, which were at the far back of the storage space, she found a small bag filled with feces. I should mention where she found it is exactly next to where my bed is on the other side of the wall. The rustling that woke me up that night, it was him, hiding his shit amongst our tinsel and tree. So, sister's baby daddy who hid in our crawl space and used it as a private bathroom, let's not meet, yeah? Online date gone wrong. So to start, I'm a transgender woman, I'm single and I make my status as trans very clear on all my dating profiles, except plenty of fish because they consider that to be talking about sex and they will straight up ban you. So I state instead that I'm a huge proponent of trans rights. So this guy messages me, he lives about an hour away, kinda cute in a mildly creepy way. Like something seems a little off about him but people can't help how they look so I give him a chance just like I would want. I discover he's a smoker but he says he's trying hard to quit and only does when he's really stressed or upset. We have a nice conversation and finally he asks for my number. And without thinking about it, I give him the number but tell him I'm getting ready for my evening classes so I'll be slow to respond. A few minutes go by and I get 
Hey, it's username from POF. Now, usually I send standard quick message. Hi, it's Ali. So just to be clear, since my profile might be a little vague, I'm a transgender woman. I know that's not everyone's cup of tea. So if you're not interested, I completely understand. About 20% of the time, the guy isn't interested and gets rude and needs to be blocked. And the other 80% is split between immediate inappropriate questions and dick pics, casual acceptance or dead silence. But like I said, I was getting ready to go to class, so I hadn't sent the message yet. A few minutes go by and I'm about to text him my standard when I get another text. Who the F is full dead name? Why is he paying your cell phone bill? Me, uh, where did you even get that name? Him, answer the question, who is he? I'm honestly stunned at this point and I realize he must have paid one of those shady websites that offer personal info for a fee. Well, if you must know, I'm transgender and that used to be my name. I was about to tell you when you pull that stunt, please do us both a favor and lose my number. That's incredibly invasive and I don't want to talk to you anymore. Do you still live at, my address at the time, in hometown? I'm coming to see you so we can talk about this in person. Me lying, no, I moved a few months ago and I'm getting ready to head out like I said, you need to leave me alone. Don't contact me again, him. Since you have something to hide, I am going to run a full background check on you. You lied to me and I don't appreciate that. Me, I'm sending screen caps of this conversation, your POF profile and your photos to my two best friends who work in law enforcement in your town and my ex-boyfriend who I'm still on good terms with who works for the local sheriff's office. Don't text me again. I didn't hear anything else from him for a few weeks. I made sure my doors and windows were locked and the aforementioned friends and ex would check up on me from time to time. Eventually, it just became one of those weird things that makes you laugh uneasily. And then, one day, I thought I saw him at the local grocery store. Same dark hair, fake glasses frame, and just creepy guy staring at me, watching me as I shopped. I text my ex about it, and as an upswing on things, my ex and I got back together in casual sort of way and he stayed the night a few times a month off and on. One night when I was alone though, I just kept getting this weird feeling and smelling smoke. I lived in a little apartment complex that were three separate apartments that shared walls, but no plumbing or air ducts. I don't smoke and I'm very sensitive to the smell thanks to asthma. The apartment had a wall unit AC, so I turned it off since it was apparently pulling air in from a neighbor's guest who must have been chain smoking, I thought. I had an ASL video due the next morning, so I was up all night practicing and recording the video, signing the same story over and over again until it was almost a dance rather than narration. A couple of times I had to restart the video because my cat was going nuts. Finally, around 7am I had the video finished and sent in and was ready for bed. So I double checked all the doors and windows were locked, set an alarm and went to sleep. I woke up and got ready for school, was running a bit late and had to hurry out the doors, but I noticed something weird but didn't have time to stop and register it. Classes went smoothly, I got an A on my ASL video and I stopped for groceries on my way home from class. As I got home, I saw what had been bugging me. Each apartment had a small garden on each side of the porch. Mine was nothing but gravel and pavers the previous tenant had put in. But it was tidy. Except for a pile of cigarette butts that looked like someone had dumped their car ashtray in my garden. There was no other trash, just that pile, right in front of my bedroom window. I don't think anything about it at first and just get a broom and dustpan and sweep it up. As I'm doing it, my neighbor, an old man, comes out and asks if my boyfriend ever got a hold of me. I ask him what he means. He tells me there was a young man waiting for me on my front porch off and on for a few hours last night, that he'd seen the guy around before and thought he was my boyfriend. I ask what he looked like, dark hair, fake glasses, chain smoking. I text the on again, off again ex, cops take statements and I give them the screenshots. I moved out of the state a few weeks later for unrelated reasons and have legally changed my name since with closed records. I don't give guys my number anymore. Ladies and my fellow queer family, use a texting app until you get to know someone. Because for like $5, creeps can get everything from your number.
Those were the stories for today's video. If you enjoyed this and want to watch more videos, then click here for more stories or go check out the info cards in the right corner for more videos.